Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to continue my discussion of MySQL. And in today's video, I will mainly focus on Entity Framework Core with MySQL. So if you have not watched my previous videos in MySQL, I'll strongly suggest you go and watch them before you watch this video. I'm going to provide the link in the description below. In my previous video, I created a table called users in MySQL. And I also had a couple of store procedure, create user as well as delete user. So in today's video, I'm going to continue the discussion of the same creating user, updating user, deleting user in MySQL using Entity Framework Core. So for that, what I have done is I added a couple of NuGet package. First one is the obvious one, which is Microsoft.EntityFramework Core. The second one is MySQL.EntityFramework Core, which will be needed for connectivity between MySQL and Entity Framework. And I am using .NET 6 for this project. So first what we're going to do is we're going to create a new class and I'm going to name this class as user context. And let me fix the namespace. And user context will derive from DB context just like any other implementation of Entity Framework Core. And here in the constructor, I'll pass the connection string. Essentially for dependency injection. Now in this video, I will not do the dependency injection because I'm going to access everything from program, but passing connection string through constructor allows us to use dependency injection. I'm going to define public db set and it will be user and I'll name it as users. And finally, I'm going to override the on configuring method. And here for the option builder, I'm going to use MySQL and pass the connection string here. Next, I'll be creating the user model for that, let's create the user in a new file. And user is going to have four properties. ID, name, email, and address this for. Next, what I'm going to do is now, this is the time where I want to use the user context and create data into the database. So in my database for the users table, right now I do not have any data. So let's go here. And for this one, we can say, And I'll have to add the namespace. And for the connection string, I'm going to pass environment.get environment variable. I have set the connection string in the environment variable. And the connection string is named with a variable connection. So you can either pick up connection string from environment variable or a secret provider or whatever other place you want. 
I used using here because the user context or the DB context implements iDisposable. And then we can do user context dot add. And here we can say new user. And for the name, let's say user one email. User one at the rate email dot com and then for the address let's say one two three street and then finally I'm just going to say user context dot save changes that's about it so first I am creating the user context and then to the user context I am adding a new user and then finally I'm saving the context so this is going to create a new record into this users table so let's run this application and once the application runs, we can go back here, execute, and we can see the user one is added to the database as expected. Now, if we want to get the user, all we have to do is we can do user context dot users. select let's say we just want to print this too and we can do a console dot write line can just do string dot join because the select will return an array hence we are passing string dot join so if I run this now this is going to print out the one user that we have in database and we can see user one one two three street Next, what we want to do is we want to update the user. So for updating the user, what we can do is again, user context dot users. And then after we get the users, we can do fast uh, to get the fast user. Dot name. And let's change the name from user one to user2 and then we are going to do user context dot save changes that's all and let's run it right now and we should see the user is we should see the username changing from user1 to user2 once the execution is complete so if we go here run it we can see it is changed to user2 as expected. And finally, to delete the user, what we have to do is we can say user user context dot users dot remove. And here we can just pass the fast user. and then just do save changes and run the application and once it is executed we can go select and we can see the user is deleted now let's use 
the store procedure for creating users. So we're going to use the create store procedure, then we'll use the delete store procedure, just like we did with Tepper. So for that, what we are going to do is, first we are going to create the, the parameters. So what we can do is we can use three different parameters. First one is name, new MySQL parameter and we can say name and I don't want to keep the type, it's not needed. And here we can say new user one. Similarly, we can say var email and we'll have email and here it can be new user1 at the rate email.com and then finally we can say var address is equal to new SQL parameters of address and for the address we can say 456 straight so we created the parameters and after we created the parameters all we can do is we can execute a new store procedure uh, and for store procedure what we are going to do is we're going to use user context dot database dot execute execute sql row and then to this method we're going to pass the store procedure call and for that we'll have call that's the syntax for mysql create user and we're going to pass the parameters which is name email address that's the store procedure and then we have to pass the parameters so for parameters let's say parameters is here we can just say new and we can pass the name email and address that's pretty much it and this execute sql row at the end of the day is going to execute call this store procedure and create this user in the database so what we can do is now we can run this application and once the application is executed now we can go into the database go back here run the select again and we can see new user one new user one at the rate email and 456 street data is created in the database with an id of two because earlier the id was one which we deleted now id is two and this is exactly what we expect and then finally we can do is uh, we can delete the user using the delete user store procedure but for delete user It takes one parameter called identifier and we can get rid of the rest of the item and for identifier we can just set uh, var identifier and here we can pass the id as 2 and here we can just pass the identifier because as you can see this takes a param it's a param of object array which means we can just pass this one as well we don't have to pass it in an array so now if i execute this this should go ahead and delete the user with id2 which is the user we created using the create user store procedure once this is executed now if I go here, I execute this and this is going to delete the record from the database. So as you can see, using entity framework also, working with MySQL server is super easy. We just created a user context or a context class deriving from db context 
and then expose the users. And then after that, we can use the user context to create, delete, update data, either using the user context and the object model, or we can also use execute SQL row on the user context database to call store procedure to achieve the feature that we want. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.